Five, four, three, two, one. Please do not change channel. From Krypton Radio, brought to you by Famous Faces and Funnies and Off the Chain with Yvonne Mason, it's the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour, the Internet's premier pop culture talk radio show. You're tuned in, you're logged on, and now your host, G.W. Palmiter and Christian Basil. Who are you hanging with? Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour. I'm G.W. Palmiter. I'm Christian Basil. I welcome Krypton Radio, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and wherever you're listening to us on the Internet, which actually, ironically, is going to be the title of what we're talking about this episode. That's right. We're going to talk about the Internet. And, wow. You know, and stuff. And stuff. <laughs> and stuff. That's right. Uh, I'm sorry. Hells. That was a, a horrible, horrible song that went through my head I mean, as soon as you said Internet, and it was awful. Um, no, what song? What song? You can't oh, I, say that. I can't. I can't. There was a Muppet. Yes. There was a Muppet takeoff uh, comedy show I saw on YouTube of these Muppet animals singing that the the internet is for porn. The internet is for porn. Oh, that's a, that's that um that's um. Oh yeah. my God! I can't. Yes, think. It's the, not Sesame Q. No, what was it? I forgot the name of it now. But it was, uh, I will tell everybody in a minute. So as soon as you said we're going to talk about the internet, that's the first thing that went to my mind. Uh, but it is. <laughs> you know, and, and, but you know. Avenue Q, Avenue Q. Avenue Q, that's them. That's right. Um, and yes, yeah, so anyway, we're going to talk about that, but we're actually going to talk uh, not necessarily about the internet itself, but about the technology that we're using on the internet today. And uh, the, the topic of tonight's conversation is technology addiction and and sort of asking ourselves and our guests and our our listeners out there, what is your technology weakness? What is your technology sweetie? <laughs> you know, um, because it is, it's, it, it's, uh, there's, uh, Apple, uh, has just, uh, announced the release of an app to help you monitor your use of your tech. And particularly oh, your, God. Yeah. Um, to help you get control of your technology addiction. So we're going to talk about that in, uh, in just a minute. And, uh, we're going to talk. <laughs> It is. Isn't like Bud? Isn't that like Budweiser giving out, uh, telling you that you have an addiction? You have alcoholism. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it's uh, you know, this is you know, uh, Alcoholic Anonymous sponsored by Budweiser. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, it is. It, but you know what? It's great because it's uh, probably uh, for all of the many vices and addictions that we have. What's fantastic uh-huh. is that uh, this is an example of a company trying to get ahead and say, we acknowledge that we have created this phenomenon, and we want to help you take responsibility uh, for it. And we'll talk about that a little bit, too. Uh, before we <laughs> dive into that, though, uh, our own Sagia has some fantastic news, or maybe not so fantastic. I actually haven't read the news in front of her yet, so. She's going to give us the news in pop culture. Wait a minute, you just said Muppets and you said Phenomenon. Isn't that a Muppet song? Yes. Phenomena. 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 Okay, what well, well, news? Go ahead, Sage. I'm go sorry. Ahead, go ahead, do <laughs> okay, here we go. Are you ready? Phenomena. Right. Tonight. Tonight, there's the two-hour premiere on Freeform of Marvel's Cloak and Dagger. It stars oh Aubrey Joseph and Olivia Holt. And just letting everybody know, the first four out of ten episodes are for backstory. They're making sure that you get it. Okay, so the the people who bring us uh, all the ABC universe is, is Freeform, and they're going to make sure we get the backstory of our comic book stuff. That's correct. So ABC wow. and Disney don't know technically that the CW exists. Well, no, Cloak and Dagger, since they're it, it's taking advantage of the Marvel universe for the for the young kids, like we have the Runaways and, and that kind of stuff. So no, the Runaways was really good. That's I mean, it. So they're, they're is good. you know. Tagging yeah. into that audience is what they're doing. Tagging so. in, it's their turn. Two hours I'm gonna, premiere. So, so well, and I'm gonna. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, Christian. You can talk. Over no, that's, I was about to say. I I hate to say this, but I think I'm. De- I, I I've never heard of Cloak and Dagger, <gasps> except if the '80s film with Dabney Coleman. If anybody remembers that at all. Wow. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? 
Oh, what happens if I say yes? Then that means I'm dating myself as well. <laughs> we're all we're all dated. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, there you go. I have another bit of news since we're talking about uh, premieres and, and things. I don't know if this necessarily counts as a premiere because it's a finale. Um, but on Friday, June 8th, Netflix has the two-hour special finale of Sense8. Finally, it's coming, and fans have been promised a fantastic, fitting conclusion. Yeah, for our Sense8 yeah. Story. Uh, I Sense8, I think, is one of the. It's probably one of the most um, profound uh, television shows I've seen anywhere, let alone on you know streaming and everything else. Um, in a long time, it's really, really insightful. Um, maybe even uh, too deep for pop culture, as it were. That's so good, though. For you know, for popular culture, not not pop culture the way we understand it from inside the geek in here, but pop culture meaning that's everybody. That's, yes. You know, and this is this, it's a show that really dives into some really deep issues. It is cerebrally stunning. It is. I like the way you worded that. Thank you. Very well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Appreciate that. It's my favorite. And Dina weighed in. She did. She finally she weighed did. in. So. Well, and speaking of weighing in, um, Deadpool 2 mm-hmm. is off to the box office records. They are headed towards 6 million worldwide for Deadpool. Wait, wait. No, no, you did that wrong. Did I do that wrong? Six I think million. I might have. Yeah. It was good. Six million? <laughs> That's what the 600 saying. million, maybe? Oh, I don't know. I think maybe 600 million. Anyhow, it's doing very well. <laughs> I think it that's made, Ryan Reynolds' paycheck made, for this movie. It, it made it made six million in the first hour it was, it was open. So. Yes, I'm sure. But, but yeah, no, it is, and it's at six hundred million worldwide right now. You're talking about it beat its own record, highest grossing um, rated R rated R. That's right, movie of all time. That's exactly so. right. And did you know that there's um, an Omaze campaign going on right now for Let's F Cancer? Yes. And there are only 23 days left, but you can win Deadpool's katana swords because we all need that. They're the prop swords from the from the movie set. The, the actual yeah. props. The actual props from the movie set. So you want to impress your girl? Ta-da! Katana swords. Impress your girl. Hell, Lauren has probably already entered that. I've already entered what? The, to get the Deadpool <laughs> katana. That's right. Want to chop a watermelon? Katana. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, so if she wins those, every cosplay that she has will have katana swords, no matter what. That's right. That's right. Got poison ivy with katana, katana swords and everything. I do have a few katana swords. We could we could do this. We could yes. do, it, it, she can see. She can make that happen. Like, she can make that happen. Okay. What well, else she got on the opposite side of, of the movie coin. Yeah. Um, Solo, a Star Wars story. Is predicted to lose Disney money of, of close to fifty million dollars, based on you know the budget that they had to, to get everything out, and uh, that doesn't even take their marketing. And they said it's Star Wars fatigue. Well, it's and Avengers. It, honestly, it is. It should have spaced uh, it, it is out. Blockbuster fatigue. They didn't space them out. There's no more summer blockbusters. Those days are over. This is all about spreading it through the year a little bit. And literally, we had Avengers, and then Deadpool, and then Solo, and you know, and before that, we had Black Panther. And I haven't even seen Solo yet. Yeah, me neither. And it's, I don't have enough time. <laughs> it is. It is. There's too much coming at one time. It's literally one after the other after the other. They need to be spread out through the year a little bit more. And, and out of all of them, that's the one I'm looking forward. I, I am. I'm very much looking forward to the movie. I really am. It's just I haven't had time, and it. it you know, I we don't go to the movies very often. Because of the, the the nature of uh, cost effective, you know, raising a family, you go to the movie like thirty dollars per person. Yeah, so now you're looking at you know another uh, yet another blockbuster in the same period of time. I, it doesn't surprise me. I hope that this does send it a message up the chain uh, to the powers that be that we need to spread these out a little bit through the year. But yeah, do you think Bob Iger when they asked him and he goes, "I don't know, I've got a bad feeling about this." Oh. Oh, wow. Sorry, I couldn't resist that. Wow. Uh, okay. Well, thank you for the news. You're welcome. <laughs> That's how we end this. End it on a low note. Well, right? I can end on a good note. What do you if, got? If you want. Okay. You got something okay. on a good yes, note? Yes, I absolutely do. You know, because Fortnite is incredibly popular in the gaming world right now. Yeah. There's rumors or innuendo about Nintendo. Sorry. Wow. Um, that the, 
She's on a rhyming <laughs> thing tonight. I think. It, it, wow, but an hour is going to go really long with you rhyming. So, yes, day. but the uh, Fortnite Battle Royale uh, Nintendo Switch is doing a possible reveal at E3 2018. Okay. And this happens to be one of the most popular games out there. It is, and it's popular with uh, older teens. It's also popular with younger kids. Yep. It, it, it's something that kind of has a universal popularity with, with young teens. It is. Well, it's the most watched and the most streamed item out there right now um, on Twitch since it's 2017 million. Sad, I did not know. Now I know something that, that was truly the news. I know something I didn't know before. There you go. See, better, more positive note. Yes. And that's all she wrote. That's, oh. Oh, you know, 60 minutes is a long time for this, Christian. Can we mute her? Um, <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> she's wow. yours, though. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> she, 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 she's in Can't stop the signal. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would be. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody. Uh, that is the pop culture news right about now. What's coming? What's going? Um, uh, we want to remind everybody, we always, uh, early on in the show, we announced uh, when the expanse from sci-fi was canceled. And uh, for those that don't already know it, it's found a new home on Amazon. It's picked up multiple seasons. Yay! Multiple seasons of the expanse coming at Amazon based on the popular book series. Um, and you guys can check that out. And um, Hashtag Rocinante is alive. Very cool. Very cool. And um, and now we're on to our topic. Our topic. Is it a good topic for a science fiction and sci-fi fan uh, audience? Because we, we, we you know, as we travel around and we do conventions and we do shows, we notice more and more uh, how uh, imperative to our lives our technology is. Uh, we do the show here in the studio at home. We also, you know, uh, carry our tech on the road so we can do interviews and things like that. Uh, Sage tried to kill Kristen and I at Megaton just two weeks ago, uh, where, where she scheduled interview after interview after, I, did, I lost count. I lost count. It was so much fun. I also lost my voice. Yes, that was also yes, fun. Yes, you did. Yes. And uh, so, uh, but we had a great time. Uh, but technology is such an integral part of what we do uh, and what our audience is doing every day. Um, our, our inspiration for tonight's show came from an announcement from uh, the CEO of Apple. Tim Cook. Uh, who announced that Apple was introducing an app that will monitor not just your usage in terms of time, minutes, you use, etc., but it's going to monitor the, the number of times you pick up your phone, the number of times you uh, check on certain apps, and it's going to monitor, it's going to tell you what those apps are. And this is all to help people counteract um, a technology addiction. Um, and, and himself, he said, he has beta tested the app. He thought he was a very disciplined phone user. It's called screen time. And he thought he was a very disciplined phone user. And what he found out by looking at the numbers was he's really not. He was picking up his phone over 20 or 30 times per hour to look at, to check for messages, to look, you know, look at social media, check his email, etc. Um, and we had so many conversations with parents and, and you know, people about uh, technology and, and what it's meant to developing you know, new rules and new manners and, and everything like that. So we're joined on the line with uh, cosplayer extraordinaire and great Hang With Web Show friend mm-hmm. and soon coming uh, Hang With Web Show guest, uh, Laura Edinger. Laura, how are you? I'm pretty good. And so what is your, what's your technological sweetie? What do you have to have with you at all the time? <laughs> What do I have to have with is, me? Is it your phone? Um, is it an iPad? Is uh, it your computer? What What are you? What are you? I on? carry my phone and my computer everywhere. Everywhere to work. Everywhere. Oh, okay. well, yeah. And you know what? In uh, in in for for Lauren in in the world of cosplay, uh, where cameras, you know, the camera in your phone is sort of that's your. Oh, way. and I also carry my camera. <laughs> oh my! She's a triple threat. Everywhere, she's a triple threat. Um, Kristen, how about you, man? What, what, what's your, uh, what's your tech addiction? None of your damn business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it is my Android, my, my Galaxy Seven. Yeah. Uh, 
it's it's my yeah it's my life it's my key to talking to the world it's my video game it is my way of communicating to people it is my facebook it is my instagram yeah. everything i do have a laptop which i am using actually to record our show with however i'm a, i'm bare, that's the only time i actually opened up this thing yeah and, and as as technology has gotten smaller and more portable and easier to use um it's also become a greater and greater part of our daily moment to moment life and um I know my I'm I'm addicted to my iPhone. I, I you know we're out doing the show, we're out in public, or we're sitting at the house, and I'm grabbing my phone, checking on social media, checking email messages, um, you know, and and you know we we uh, are, are just it's a part of our daily lives. I don't necessarily think of it as an addiction so much until you start putting it into to numerical terms, like how many times an hour I check it. I don't even want. I think I'm afraid to know that number. I know Sage is afraid to know that number. Oh, yeah. There have been times when you have looked at it and you're like, "Take a look at what you're doing." And I have the laptop, and then I have the iPad, and I have my phone, and they're all <laughs> open around me, and they're all working. Well, what, what, what? Um, it, it, because, like I said, we work on our technology. So, uh, on a social level, I, it poses the question. I'll pose this question to our listeners and and to each one of us here in the room. What's the drawback? What is the drop? Because I know I hear a lot of things from a lot of different people, but numerically, I don't know that it necessarily bears out. Um, I'm in touch with people uh, in my family and, and from far away, thanks to social media, and I get those messages right on my phone. Um, I, you know, I, I don't. I'm, I'm looking for the true drawback. If you if you can moderate yourself, or or maybe I, I think I have an answer for you. Yes, please. And Lauren. Give me your take on this, if you will. Did you ever see the Disney movie Wally? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember the end as to happened to the human race and how they turned out? Well, everything was given to them. Lazy. Lazy. They couldn't. I mean, they couldn't walk. They couldn't. Uh, eat. Yeah, they really couldn't function. I, I, that's where I think if we're careful. And at least in some technologies that are coming out, it's you know, like the technology you said, how the, uh, the app that tells us how long we've been on the phone, such like that. That'll keep us in check so that we're not ending up in that direction. But it could be easily assumed that with the technology that we have, we're inter- we're being lazy-ish. Um, I remember, Gary, you and I, when we grew up in school, and I had to explain to the millennials that the Dewey Decimal is not one of the cousins of Donald Duck. It is, <laughs> it is something, yeah, it is something that we had to go do, find, you know, we had to look up, we had to put effort into what we're doing now. But everything that we took for granted, you know, the compass, the protractor, how to find things, I can go on my phone, ask an app what what's this number plus this number, and it'll give me the answer within seconds. Yeah, no, I, 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 I certainly can see where, um, where you know, having the tools to be lazy, for lack of a better way to put it, is, um, you know, has its pitfall. Um, yeah. I guess my question is, though, um, you know, I, I remember my parents' generation lamenting uh, the use of calculators um, in school because they didn't get to do it. Um, right. it, it was many years before they actually acknowledged the fact that they didn't get to use calculators in school, but pretty much they learned how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Uh, our generation was learning trig and calculus. Our kids are now learning uh, math that I, I probably, when they finally name it, I won't be able to pronounce it. Look, they have some crazy math. It's just like four pages to do one problem. It, is, it, it doesn't is. make any sense. I'm dreading it. It is. It is really difficult. And I'm an accountant. See? <laughs> It is. I mean, when you learn when you learn basic uh, what what we could term consumer math, accounting math, um, it it's one set of skills, um, and a calculator is an int- is a great tool for accuracy. When you learn advanced mathematics, when you're into to trigonometry and calculus and how you know how to make airplanes fly, it's another set of math and another set of tools. And now, as we're preparing to put you know people on another planet. Um, it's another set of math and another set of rules and another set of tools. So I, I, 
I'm curious if the integration of these tools into our lives is a negative or simply something that having not had to do it as young people, we're just resistant to. Because the reality is, I think that, you know, we all like to say back in the good old days, but, you know, in the good old days, I couldn't be in touch with an elementary school friend 45, oh my God, I'm old. Wow. Uh, you know, 45 years later, I'm in touch with people and I see their grandkids and, and, and these things that I couldn't have done that. I couldn't have had that kind of activity, you know, as, as a young person. But, but little Michael will grow up and that will be all he knows. He's connected to a billion people on earth um, in a way that I couldn't even imagine that at that age. Well, I think there's, there's the only disadvantage because you don't want to take that, that connection, that social connection that you have with people far away and forget about the people who are right in front of you. We've all seen it where you have, you know, a bunch of kids. Um, I remember when you could watch and they were all sitting together in one room, but they were all on their phone and they weren't actually talking to each other. And Instead, there's the danger. Yes. And, and that I think is it. So you don't. It is, it is do you tri- do you use a tool effectively? And the way it was meant to be used, or do you replace one lifestyle with a, with a lifestyle that's presented to you by the tool? And that's the difference between using a tool and what we're talking about tonight is addiction to the tool. Yeah, you have to incorporate that. You have to use it, you know, because a lot of times we will be on our phones and we will show each other videos or whatever right here all together doing something. Um, but you're right. I've sat in restaurants and seen whole families sitting at tables, everyone doing something different. I don't think it's just just the addiction, but the appreciation of what came before. And 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 then, Lauren, uh, tell tell me what you think about this. If I go out in the woods and I have a box of matches, I can easily start a fire, strike a match, and do that. Now, take the matches out of my hand. What do I do now? Same thing with the kids. You know, the punishment for some of these kids nowadays is they take the cell phone away. Now, what does the kid do? They have no idea how to interact with other people. Exactly. It would they don't know, you know, now you start to read, now you start to evolve, learn things. And it was the same thing when we were taking tests in school and math tests, they would take the calculators away. And they said, you have to figure out how to do this without a calculator. We lose the basics. If we, if we lose the impression of the basics, we won't learn what to do when we don't have that convenience in our hands, readily available. Yeah, now a cashier can't tell me, you know, what change I need from a dollar when it was 95 cents, and I'm like, really? No, that's exactly right. I think really? You know, hanging, on, <laughs> hanging on to those basic skills is an imperative. Yeah. And the question is, how do we incorporate this technology into our lives while doing that? Because the reality is that there are a lot of things about the good old days that I don't miss. I'm glad that my generation never knew what polio was like. I'm really glad that that the women of my generation never had to know what the rule of thumb was all about. Um, so there are a lot of things about the good old days that I don't miss. Um, and they're the result of emerging technology, vaccines, and, and communication, and knowing what's going on so that we can communicate with one another about imperative issues. The question is, how do we retain our old skills while incorporating our new skills? How do we do that? Is there a way, or are we just, uh, I mean, for lack of a better way to put as a human being, just incapable of moderating themselves? I don't think so. I'll tell you what, the college student today is very thankful that they don't have to lug around a huge backpack full of textbooks. All they have to have mm-hmm. is, you know, is their Kindle reader or their Nooker or whatever, and all of their textbooks are right on it. Yeah. Or imagine, imagine. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, not just a, a backpack full of textbooks or whatever, but imagine, trying, <clears throat> imagine trying to do some of these things. Uh, in, in at a college level, anybody remember typing your first college paper on a typewriter? Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. I. We. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Uh, Thanks, Lauren. And even even <laughs> even with a even with a dictionary and a thesaurus sitting right next to me, uh, I still was ding for spelling errors and for simple things that I missed. Mm-hmm. That now I have spell checker. Now I have these things. I still need my thesaurus. I still need my dictionary. I still need to double check myself. I can't let the software do it for me, but. It is. It is certainly um, a, a uh, an incredible tool to have. You know, the question is: is that no matter what tool we have, I'm pretty sure that when, when they invented the hammer, some guy hit another guy over the head with it because he was bored. Yes. Yeah. Just 
Probably. No matter what new tool we develop, we always we always find a way to use it poorly before we learn how to use it well. Um, with that said, we're going to take a little commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to dive into it some more. And let's see what, uh, what let's see if we can solve these critical problems of the earth right now in the show in the next hour. I'm sorry, Lauren. You will never understand the fun aspects of liquid paper that kids had in high school. <laughs> liquid paper is the drug of choice now for some people. Uh, yeah. That's right. Let's uh, let's go ahead take- and thank our partners and friends. Go ahead there. Channeling the Mothership is an exciting journey into the higher mysteries. Certified psychic medium and clairvoyant Jerry McDaniel's readings, writings, and messages have been received by thousands of people in more than 45 countries. These messages have been obtained by channeling his higher self. How does he do it? Is it a blessing or a curse? And what lay beyond the reach of your five senses? These mysteries and so much more are examined in this explosive book, Channeling the Mothership. Explore the mysteries of the spiritual and the metaphysical. Channeling the Mothership by author Jerry McDaniel. Available on Amazon.com today. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFF Comics. Greetings, true believers. This is absolutely, positively not Stan Lee, reminding you that you are listening to Krypton Radio. Krypton? That's the other guy. It's sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. Excelsior! Welcome back, World Wide Web. We are here. This is the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour. I'm G.W. Commander. Yeah, I'm Christian Benizel. Welcome back, folks. And we are talking about the World Wide Web. Uh, Sorry. Technology addiction and just how we're using or misusing the new uh, and improved tools <laughs> of our age. Um, so we were, misusing. We, yeah, we, um, we got uh, we got to picking on uh, Lauren a little bit about her, her lack of, of whiteout. Uh, mm. Yes. I am old soul. An old soul. <laughs> Art not. That not doesn't know what life without internet is like. <laughs> life with oh. life, life without the internet. And it, you I know, remember that. I do. I do remember that. But I also, you know, I remember. I life without the internet. Life without I remember being angry about dial-up taking so long. Uh, I remember uh, about thinking that dial-up was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. Chat rooms. That's right, chat rooms and AOL and... Uh, Still have ju- <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Yeah. And so, um, you know, access to information. Let's talk about that. Is it too much information? Because remember, uh, we, we, there's a great there's that great commercial of you know, uh, that we saw. I think it's I don't remember what kind of commercial it is though. But it's, it's essentially you know I met a guy online. Bonjour. Yeah, that one. And um, is it too much information? It doesn't have to be true to be on the internet. It just has to be. There's no we're, we're in the arts and entertainment journalism industry. That's what we do. We tell people stories. We talk about issues. We talk about arts and entertainment and the things that we love. But we're journalists. Um, there's no line on the internet for journalism. It's not. When I went to journalism school, we, we learned there are rules. These are what you must do. This is what you must you know, have. Um, the internet is full of bloggers and bloggers and YouTubers and. Um, I mean, these, this is what we do. This is what our living is right now. Um, so, but, but wasn't that the whole issue with Facebook? Because it couldn't tell you if it was if it was journalism or if it was freedom of speech. I think that's where the the Bunsen burner burnt everything down. This is the question. Yeah, it because is. we didn't know. And where is freedom of speech? Because does hate speech include freedom of speech? As long as not speech that if, if you had people wearing red shirts and people wearing green shirts and the red shirt people came out and said we hate the green people you know where do we draw the line on that 
Well, and the, and the bottom line is, is that, you know, there are certain kinds of speech that have always been uh, not protected. Hate speech, for example, is one of them. Um, uh, the, the Supreme Court is very clear on rulings uh, as far back as the early 1800s. Uh, you can't yell fire at a crowded theater. It's not right. freedom of speech if it puts people in danger. Um, yes. So these are these are one issue. However, um, it, you know when we get to the issue of, of journalism, um, what if there's a, a group of red shirts and a group of green shirts, and the red shirts insist uh, loudly and proudly that the green shirt people are all wearing purple shirts? It's very obvious that they're green, but if mm-hmm. it's on the internet, they must be purple. I mean, they're redefining what that color is because there's no rule about what you're accountable for. There's no, in the old newspaper room, we had long discussions when we were doing a story about libel, about slander, about the definition of these words, so we couldn't tell a bald faced lie. We, you're liable for that. When you're a blogger or a vlogger, even here, here where we're at, web radio and podcasting world, we're, there's accountability for those things is, is lacking in the internet generation. So, you can tell a bold faced lie on the internet, and if people believe it, they believe it, and if they don't, they don't. And there's where is the accountability that we had when I went to journalism school? If I wrote it down and it wasn't accurate, I was liable as for, for libel. Yes, well, and I think those issues have been around. They haven't disappeared. But as you had said, with the internet and the way that we watch TV, now we know about all of those things. It's not like they've never happened before. It's just oh, now no. we see it all the time. Oh, it's, yeah. It's in your face I mean, every day. Is there, is there a level, I mean, uh, Kristen hit it right on the head. You know, Facebook is, is revamping things every day now, trying to weed out the, the onslaught of uh, media and information coming at its users. But don't the users have, a, I mean, don't they have a right to that? If you, if you want to think that green is purple, do you have a, don't you have that right? Well, it's not only that, but if the red shirts say, we need to kill all green people, that's hate That's hate speech that it should not be around. But yeah, if the red shirts say, well, we hate the green people, but not um, it, 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 it violence to it, is that fine? And because we be in a society that wants to incorporate everybody. Everybody has to be inclusive of everything. But also, what about the individual who says, you know, I don't like green shirts. Why should I be, why should I associate with green shirts? Why, I, I just want to be with red shirts. Well, that's, Does that that's, promote hate speech or is that, well, that is that, there a line on that? Isn't there, isn't that where the line between, uh, between law and, um, and regulation has always been met by social consciousness? Because the reality is that, um, you know, uh, it's not against the law in the deep south to be a clan. It's against the law to act on it. But it's not, yes. a, it's not, a, it's not against the law to have these opinions or to speak these opinions openly. Um, so, but it is frowned upon. Society can frown upon something and make it, uh, and, and take away its power. By but we're also seeing society push law to quelch those ideas. Yeah, they're frowned upon. We don't like them. That's right. But freedom of speech was not always popular speech. It was not always the right speech. That's right. It was always speech that somebody had expressed and had an opinion about. And it is up to us as individuals to go, okay, that's wrong. That's right. I mean, I, this is an issue. We shouldn't we, hate them. We, we talk about this online a lot in the term in terms of things like uh, cyberbullying. What is that exactly? Um, right. Trying to define that is really hard because, honestly, um, is shaming... Is shaming bullying? If someone says to you, "I simply hate. I hate people. I hate round people, square people, triangle people." You know, hey, hey, hey! Don't hate the triangle people. Don't hate the triangle people. That's right. However, if (laughs) somebody says they do, and then you shame them and you back them down and you say it's just wrong, that kind of hate is just wrong, and you shame them, is that bullying them, or is that simply doing what society has done for a millennium? When, when there's no law or rule or regulation, the, the, the social order is through, uh, mores. Not written laws, not, not legal rules, but just social mores. Things that tell us that these are acceptable and unacceptable behaviors. You know? And. Well, 
Lauren, where do you where do you find the line on these on these two issues here, both cyberbullying and hate speech? Um, uh, I generally just don't post anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, you know what it is. That's that's that's, a, that's an interesting place to come down because really, I I own a company. I can't more. Yeah, more. Then that's just it. That's what we were just talking about. Those social mores. Lauren knows that there are certain things she simply can't say. You know that she wants to because there are social I, mores. She's in business that will hurt her business. It is. It is. Or, or my family. I mean, during the elections, I posted a meme. And I lost two of my family members because they hated me for voting for somebody, even though I actually didn't even vote for the person. Yeah, just see, it is. It is. <laughs> I literally just posted a meme because it was funny. <laughs> see, and that's it. That is the world we live in, where those social mores and those those expectations are there, and we learn uh, to incorporate our new tools. You know, I I used to tell my own kids growing up as social media became prominent that Facebook, for example, is the largest public cocktail party in the world. So you shouldn't say anything on your Facebook page that you wouldn't say in a crowded cocktail party. Yeah, so, in front of grandma. Yeah, you don't go into you don't go into a party you've been invited to and sit at the table in the middle of the room and announce all of the things that are bad in your life and why and who's responsible because chances are that's not going to win you any friends at the party. Or or a job because nowadays businesses have incorporated they do. social media as part of their checks. You know, you apply for a job before, you know, you filled it out on paper and that's what they knew. They just knew you from your what you wrote on the paper and from your interview. And now you can see, you fill out your stuff online, you have a face-to-face interview, but then they can go and investigate you yeah. on your Facebook or your Twitter and, and, you know, what are you doing? What are you saying? For all the folks out there on Krypton Radio, iHeartRadio and iTunes that are just tuning in right now, our discussion tonight has been about uh, technology addiction. And right now we're discussing social media and the internet in particular. And um, I think one of the reasons that this ties in so well to the topic is because I think uh, I'm not certain. I can't speak to it until I get the app from Apple. But I'm fair certain that one of the biggest addictions that we all have is to our social media feeds. Those are the things we're looking at, I think, on our phones and things. I don't get that many text messages. And I don't, I honestly, with my phone, I don't get that many phone calls. But yeah, I, I think do, like three people have my phone number. Yeah, I mean, but I do check my social media feeds quite a bit. And so I think that more than the tool, more than the phone or the tech, I'm not necessarily addicted to the phone or to my laptop or to the desktop so much as to my social media feeds. And what's happening in this community that I built around myself, um, and those communities are larger and larger. They used to be, you know, thirty or forty friends. Now they're hundreds of friends. Um, if you own a business or if you are a public figure online, you're talking about thousands of connections in your community that you cultivate. And I think people are addicted to knowing what's happening in that community. And yes, or when someone wants to get in touch with you. For me, it's I check for emails. I don't want to miss this, or I, you know, did this person reach out? That kind of thing. And the bubbles, oh, the bubbles will drive you insane. <laughs> yeah, if, if actually, if Apple wants to do something really nice for us, uh, they will uh, soften our notification parameters so that red bubbles are not the go to. Uh, that, that, that basically bullied me into checking my email. <laughs> uh, well, I, ju- I, I just leave my phone on my desk at work just so I wait for Lauren to bust up and say, hey, what up, dork? What are you doing? Oh, I'm at work. <laughs> yeah, I'm at work. What's that? I'm at work. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, um, we, we, we all hit the same thing. We're talking about what's, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate on social media, and who's looking. Uh, Sage brought up employers. Employers looking at social media feeds now um, when you apply for a job. Uh, what do y'all thought about that? Is that appropriate? Is that is that is that uh, fair game? I think it's perfectly appropriate. Yeah, I mean, is it? I mean, that's that's uh, yeah. it's a public it's a public street and it's a public venue. Facebook. It's not like you. You know, I think people get confused. I, I say this a lot psychologically because we're at home in the comfort of our living rooms, bedrooms, wherever your computer or you're holding your phone, and you feel like this is a private space. Anything you say, you're saying it from the comfort of your own room. 
but you're saying it in the world's largest public room. Yeah, you don't want to take a selfie just of yourself and forget that your bong is sitting on the dresser behind you. That's not going to send a good message. <laughs> but it's happened. Yes. It's happened. All the time, apparently. Your sage? <laughs> no. Well, you know, Not to me. But, I can't even know, make that noise. You can't even make that noise. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is. It, 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 it's... Um, Every tool that's developed, I said this at the top of the, the segment here, every tool that's developed needs, there's a time window. We need to learn to use it properly. And until we learn to use it properly, we're just going to keep misusing the hell out of it over and over and over again. And, um, you know, what, 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 the, what, what would be a fair time frame? What, what, when should we learn and how should we teach the next group of people coming up? Um, you know, it, have we had enough fun yet? Well, the when is, is now. Time, is it time to? Is it finally time to say let's set some rules, let's make some parameters, let's, let's start. Wouldn't that be nice? Let's start passing down some uh, etiquette. etiquette. Seven-year-olds have cell phones. Yeah, see, etiquette is another place where technology has changed the paradigm without telling us. So we don't know how to. Keep, how do we keep good manners? When you inject cell phones, cell phones, which are critical, uh, we used our cell phones in our family as our kids got to be in their teens, at literally as ways to keep track of safety and security. So how do I keep that cell phone with me um, when the kids are out for dinner and not let it be obtrusive? What are my new manners? Is it time for Miss Manners to write the cell phone etiquette book? There is something to that. There should be a mismanners for for your phone. Uh, for those of you on Krypton Radio, I mean, they have finishing school. Finishing school for cell phone users. Yeah. Um, see, it's an old idea, but it's the idea that we're not, the tech. The tech's not going away. It's only going to get worse. Yeah. There's yeah. too much. There are too much benefits to it. And because of that, we can either enjoy the benefits and take charge of the negative, or the negative. I think uh, Kristen's example of you know kind of that that hyper, hyperbolic example of you know the movie Wall-E. Um, that's a great example of if you don't take charge of the negative. What? Well, I'm going to even go one step further and say uh, I think the golden rule about anything on the internet, and this is a hard case is if you can't say something nice, don't say anything. And to me, um, and especially around the election time, how how much vitriol was just out there. And it didn't matter who you were voting for. No, it doesn't. Uh, honestly, we didn't have, you know, everything was from the bottom of the bottom of the barrel. But, I mean, God forbid if I say I'm voting for such and such, like, like Lauren suffered from her family, like two of her family members just flew the coop. And I, I don't know those members, but I would think people who, who could not accept my friendship no matter what and still appreciate what I believe in, unless, unless I'm going to do some kind of terrorist act or if I'm going to attack somebody, you know, if who I vote for should not hinder your friendship to me. If, if I vote for somebody else or if I believe in this, you, I, I, I think that's what true friendship is. Well, because you're not forcing it down someone else's throat. Yeah, exactly. Matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm saying I'm voting for X. If if you if you don't like it, don't say anything. If you do like it, you could say something, or you can PM me and we'll talk about it, or we can talk about it online and have a healthy discussion. Well, but once the hate starts spewing out, I mean, I think that's when the personal line is strong. I don't just, need it. Can't we just agree to disagree? Christian has brought up this example once before, and I, I kind of like this um, when he talks about the NFL. Okay, because you have people who root for their team, and I'm I'm a diehard Steelers girl, right? But that doesn't mean that I hate the Patriots fan over there, because you know what? It's all about the game itself. Yeah. So as long as you're involved in something, you might not have the same opinion that I do, and I can appreciate that. So I can agree to disagree. Well, and I think the other thing is, is uh, and that's a, the, 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 what the question will take around the table. Uh, the Christian used the, the example of elections, as did uh, Lauren, and you just used the example of you know sports analogies. Um, let's go on a civil discourse. Is the anonymity? What has created the lack of civil discourse for generations? Uh, I will tell you, it just, politics happens to be something that I know about. I worked in politics for a decade, and 
it is no more vitriolic today than it was in the founding of the nation. If you look at some of the pamphlets and flyers and the things that went out about Canada's at the, at the turn of the 18th century, at the 17th to 18th century, you'll see this is a brutal, violent, verbal game. However, civil discord has always been at the forefront to how we communicate as people. Whatever they say about each other is taken with a grain of salt as we talk to each other because we know each other as, as long as it's family members, friends, those people. We we always take the vitriol out of it when, we're, when we have a civil discourse. A friend of mine said, you know, there were two things that were never allowed at my dinner table, politics and religion. You don't talk about those things at your dinner table. They start arguments and there's a time and a place for those arguments, but it's not when we're coming together. The anonymity of new technology, sitting at a screen instead of looking at a person, looking at, you know, typing keys instead of saying things out loud, does that, here's the question for the, for the, for the panel here, does that anonymity, is that contributing to our loss of civil discourse? If you had to say the same thing, face to face, eye to eye with somebody, would you be as oh, definitely. as you are on your keyboard? Uh, I mean, I personally would, but I know a lot of people that wouldn't say that to somebody's face. <laughs> yeah, but well, I mean, that's just it. it you know, it, 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 that therein, to me, it sounds like a good another good rule is if you wouldn't look me in the eye mm-hmm. and say it to me, don't type it to me. Exactly. And it, that being the case, that doesn't that doesn't mean we're we're encouraging people to go out and be more and more brazen face to face. It means that you should extend the same courtesies that you would face to face to your keyboard. Your opinions are no more valid when you type them than they are when you say them. But also, I think there should be an open mindedness to people. What what drives me up the wall is that there's there's this mentality is that. I accept that other people people have other opinions as long as they match mine. And that's not how society works, and that's not how people work. Or even they expand your mind. Yeah, exactly. Well, you, 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 you have to look at the other side of the coin sometimes and see. And the first thing people want to do, and this is what drove me nuts about the election, was if you vote for so-and-so or if you support so-and-so, unfriend me right now. I thought that was the lamest thing anybody could say. Because that, to me, that says more about the person who says, you know, I, I, can't, I can't have other opinions in my life. I can't believe this. I, well, but nobody wants to take the time, and I think this is why things can go certain ways, to actually go, I got a question. Why, why are you voting for, why have you chosen this issue, or why are you voting for this person? You'll yeah. be surprised what you'll get when you actually take that time and appreciate that somebody has another value that you don't. Well, again, and you that's might learn something. That's the difference between a conversation um, between two people and just banging away at your keys, expressing nothing but your own opinion. When you have a conversation, you can see you have eye contact, you have body language, you can see how your uh, your communications are affecting the other person. You can be more open minded. You're almost forced to be open minded because you expect them to listen to you, and because of that expectation, you have to listen to them. And that's civil discourse. When you are anonymous, when you are staring at a blank screen that doesn't have a person attached to it, and you just ramble on at the keys, all of a sudden your opinions become the right one instead of just your opinion. And and I guess that's what I was saying before was if you're out there and you're, and you're taking advantage of these fantastic, we have we live in wondrous times when you can know almost anything there is to know with the swipe of a button or just ask Alexa or ask Alexa or uh, ask Siri, Siri. or uh, ask Google um, but with all of that intense uh, information at your fingertips you still have a, a responsibility to communicate like a human being and just banging on keys thinking that that makes you right because no one can tell you not to say that probably and you know what, you know and, and you know what other outcome of this is 
if you, let's say I go, I voted for such and such, and somebody comes out and you know, attacks me for it, guess what I'm doing? I'm doubling down on what I believe, not because anymore maybe I believe it, but because you attack me, I'm going to stand my ground even harder now. Oh, well, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to hear your point of view. Your point of view is dead to me, even if you were 100% right. Yeah, no, You've it's, lost it's, the message because the message was a jerk. That, well, that's exactly right. And I think that is one of the, uh, yeah, that was the question I, that I put out with anonymity. Anonymity uh, is seen by so many as our friends. And it's not. Anonymity is the death of accountability. You know, you wouldn't dare say certain things to your grandma, but for some reason, when you're just banging away on the keys, knowing grandma's going to see it, you'll type it. And, and it's, it's, there has to be, uh, you know, at the top of the segment, we talked about kind of the new mismanners for your technology. And, yeah. and there has to be, they're not rules. They're not hard. They're not fast. We don't need lawmakers to do it. We don't need, you know, guys with rule books. What we need is, is, uh, to look at our technology and say, what is it doing good for me? And what is it doing bad for me? And, and what kind of a person is it making me? Because I can tell you, I, every day I see somebody, you know, uh, saying things on their social media account or on their phone or in a text message that they wouldn't ever dream of saying to another human being face to face because they don't feel accountable. Yeah, I get that a lot. Yeah. In fact, I literally just got that on my um, Tumblr feed uh -huh. where somebody sent me a message. It was a, a dick pic. Oh my! Just now, oh, wow! Like no joke. I literally just got an unsolicited dick pic on my yeah, phone. That, just, <laughs> is, yeah, what, that, that that is. Thank whoever you are out there in Radio Land or on the World Wide Web. Thank you very much for your kindness in sharing with us. Uh, that we are all right right now. You, you it's you first dash and second. If you want to look them up, it's it's you know a decent one. Um, as as apparently, is this what I need? Question. Oh well, apparently. Uh, well, uh, we, we don't know we don't know who you are out there on the World Wide Web, but we will tell you if you are snaking the toilet. That's probably not what you need. If you are doing. <laughs> If you are doing the dishes, if you are doing the dishes, that is probably not what you need. Um, there are a thousand answers to your question, uh, and uh, I, I cannot speak for Lauren, but I but I hope we're, we're not off base here when we say, for talking to Lauren, that is also probably not what you needed. Uh, no. So thank you for making our point, though. That is exactly what you needed to send us to make our point for us for the radio, that some of our behaviors with technology are absolutely out of hand. That is not a joke, whether it's in your hand like or out of your hand in your business. Um, but Sorry, Lauren. It's supposed to be a picture of Dick Van Dyke. Oh, my Lord. Uh, Oh my lord, that went downhill fast. Um, <laughs> wow. No, it is. That is that is exactly the point. Whoever you are out there in the World Wide Web, you made our point for us. Absolutely. Anonymity. Anonymity allows you to just take these photos and drop them in and never think to yourself that Lauren could forward that to your mom. <sighs> just saying. Uh, it, yeah. It's one of those things. People don't think. If I knew her number, I would. Amen, sister. Because I mean, the picture's already been forwarded to three other people. Well, this person is obviously wants to really get a... It's kind of... I would say it's kind of a poll. He wants to know who's interested, but... Oh, that, come on. That was see, that wonder if he oh. enough people if one of them, you know, bites the bait. Oh... It is. It is. Wow. I mean, maybe that's a bit law of averages. You play in the night. Yeah. Sends enough of those out, somebody texts back <laughs> something. Um, I'm not sure I would trust that because somebody, you know, when somebody texts back, you don't, you don't know who they are any more than they know who you are. Yeah, I don't have a picture on there. That can go badly. Bonjour. Bonjour. That's right. Um, wow. Hold on a second. We, uh, we, we're down to about five minutes. We're going to take the last five minutes. Uh, everybody on the line right now is part of our fantastic uh, pop culture convention circuit. So let's go around and, and find out from everybody where everybody's going to be coming up. Because then we can share that on our social media and on all of our technical devices, and we can feed the addictions of other people. Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. Lauren, where can Ladies people first. see you coming up? I'll be at Cosography. I'll be doing a couple of makeup panels and photos of the event. 
So I do the photos. So. Mm, awesome. We're looking I'll be forward. there signing prints. Awesome. We're looking forward to that uh, ourselves. Uh, we've got costography coming up. We also, uh, this weekend, we will be talking to filmmakers at Brevard Film and Talent. Uh, they're going to kind of host a media day for us so we can talk to all the local filmmakers about upcoming projects. Uh, Kristen, you've got some stuff coming down the pike, huh? Yeah, listen to me on Gallifrey Sands Podcast on Krypton Radio. You can check him up on Facebook. Um, we are in final discussions, but I will, looks like there's a good chance if you want to put this on your calendars, I will be re- representing the Hanging With team at Florida Supercon at, at, in Fort Lauderdale. You can check out the information at floridasupercon.com. Get your tickets there. Uh, also, don't forget Ohio Who. Uh, you can check out the Facebook page and get your tickets from there as well this coming October. And also, I'll be at Cosmography. Uh, the Traveling Tardis will be there selling prints as well. <laughs> Go figure. Oh, and I still think we should do some boudoir of it. I'm thinking about it. I, well, you know, the, we'll work on that there. The, uh, the, the, the Traveling Tardis has uh, been known to kind of get a little dirty. I don't know if we can share <laughs> those photos. Literally. Yeah, li- literally. So I, was gonna um, say, I, I have a new little song it might fit on it. Oh my! Uh, yeah. uh, wow! And 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 then we can and then we can share those pictures through text messages and see what happens. Take her off the inside. Tardis. I'm so this Tardis. Check pick. out my Tardis. <laughs> hey now. Hey now. Um, is this what you need? Yes, it's is a this boy. what you need? There you go. Um, we have uh, the Hangwood Book Show has a great uh, season coming up. We have cosmography coming down the road. The Bard from Talent, but after that, uh, Christian is headed to Supercon for us, and we uh, will have a presence uh, one way or the other at San Diego Comic Con this year. <laughs> Comic Con International, we're, we're excited about that. Uh, we also have Tampa Bay Comic Con. Yes. And we have, um, coming up in the fall, we have uh, Space Coast Comic Con uh, when, when it comes to the We also have, we have um, Tampa Bay Mega Con. We do have Tampa Bay Mega Con. Necronomicon. <laughs> It's a lot of cons. It is. It's going to be fun. And then we have um, the art show that Josh Bauer is hosting we for everyone. We do. That's going to be fantastic. I'm looking forward to talking to a lot of great fine artists at that. Um, we're, we are excited about our season coming up, guys. We hope you'll follow us on this journey. Uh, we're going to have some great topics to discuss every week, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, on Krypton Radio, iHeartRadio, iTunes. Oh, my Lord. I, how many distributors do we have now, Christian? We've really racked them up. I don't, are we on TuneIn yet? I think yes. we are, yes. Yeah, yeah, and Florida Geek Scene. Florida Geek Scene, yes. We've been, yes. Uh, we've been trying to update our, our presence there at Florida Geek Scene. So these are all the great places you can check out the Hangover Web Show Radio Hour, the Hangover Web Show Dailies. Uh, again, daily we drop every morning between 9 and 10 o'clock. We drop an interview episode with an artist, author, filmmaker, entertainer, musician, creator, cosplayer, Oh my lord! It's we love our creative arts community. It's so fantastic to be a part of it. Um, we speaking of cos, one second. Speaking of cosplayers, Lauren, where can people find your web presence? Um, on Facebook or Instagram, Where Woman with the Y, Where like a werewolf but with a Y. <laughs> Werewolf, werewoman with a Y. Uh, Werewoman with a Y. It's actually a dragon rider from a book, but that was Ah, harder to explain. There we go, there we go. Guys, look up (laughs) Lauren online and check her out. Uh, Shoot those pages some likes and uh, check out some amazing photos and some great cosplays. We have to wrap it up as we do. We want to thank our great partners and friends, the Famous Faces and the Funny Krypton Radio, Off the Chain Radio with Yvonne Mason, our brand new author sponsor, um, they, oh, Jerry, McDaniel. Jerry McDaniels, who has uh, bought the very first book ad on the radio show. So we're excited about that. And everybody, remember, log on, tune in, and see. See who, who we're, we're hanging, hanging with, with next. Yes. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.